moisture that is needed. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Four citizens input. Mr. Rizzo. I can write up. My name's Jesus Rizzo. And I appreciate the opportunity to address the uh, city council today. I appreciate that. First and foremost, I thank you for marching with us on Sunday. It was about 105 degrees where we pushed through. And I noticed that, that Mr. McLaughlin, Mayor McLaughlin, you walked with us the entire way, sir, to bad knee and everything. Sincerely appreciate that. Mr. Levino, I believe you were there as well. I don't know if anybody else was there in attendance as well, Mr. Samora. Um, Balk, is that right? I appreciate you being out there as well, sir. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of us or a lot of people that supported the cause. Um, and thanks again for providing the facilities and the personnel to ensure our safety. Your support means more to us than what you actually may know. There's a couple of things that stood out at the Unheard Voices March and the rally on Sunday. I think this is pretty evident, Doctor. Excuse me, um, Bet Mr. Beto O'Rourke, Mayor McLaughlin, and State Rep. Tracy King were there. Three different parties, you know, different things of the spectrum. But they're all there for the same reason, to, to actually, you know, demand answers, accountability from different people. There were teachers faculty from, from the school. People just started coming out. I think at the beginning people were a little hesitant, maybe afraid, put a target on their back. But we challenged them to come out and they supported their fellow teachers that fell that day. We appreciate them. There was one gentleman that actually got married recently. He came in from Germany to support people. Left his honeymoon wife out there and he said, I gotta be here for this. That's how important this is worldwide. But this is what matters. We're all different, and we, and we must come together for better, for the betterment of our community when our fellow citizens are hurting. It's an important step. A good friend of mine, I think we got to make note of this, a good friend of mine, he works at HEB Lalo, works in the meat market, Galindo. He's a Desert Storm vet. He said, and he was passionate. He seems like a, like a pretty calm guy, but he was passionate that day that I ran into him, and he says, I'm going to tell you from experience from, from you know, being overseas and going through this. He says, the very basic thing is rebuilding, having the, the people's trust. And how do you do that? He says, you do exactly what y'all displayed that day. You, you basically are knocking on people's doors. He says, we would handshake. We had to earn their trust again. You know, and you're in a totally different country, but he says, that's, that's where you begin. During our last meeting, we, we had asked, you know, the, somehow you find or we find a way to prevent Mr. Rajatonda from being on city council. The emotions were raw and the demands were loud, but you heard us. Most importantly, you listened to us and you decided not to grant the leave of absence. This is important to have this type of dialogue. That day, unlike at the, at the school, uh, school board meeting, Y'all fielded questions, you took the hits, people yelled at you, screamed at you, but 
Y'all just, you took it and you answered those questions. That's where you begin. You, you know, someone comes up here, someone comes up here and they're voicing their concerns. The people are hurting, we're all hurting, but it's, it's, it's appreciated that you actually fielded those questions. I do have, I do have a, a few questions for y'all. See if y'all can answer them or, or if you can answer them. I'm just, I'm unsure as to like the hierarchy. How, for example, like the Uvalde Police Department, who do they roll up to? Who are they? Who do they answer to? I've never gotten a clear answer on that. Um, I mean, I'll answer that question. But the chief of police answers to the city manager who answers to council. Okay. I appreciate that, sir. The other thing is school's about to start in about, you know, 15 days, a couple of weeks from now, three weeks from now. Are y'all working with the school district to, to try to, to, try to uh, uh, like, the security part of it, anything that you're doing with them? I, I mean, I have not talked to the school district. I have not talked to the school district as of yet, but I have requested to have extra law enforcement in this community on the, for the first two weeks of school. And I'm sure that the school district has been working and they're supposed to be, I believe, going to have answers to some of these questions that y'all have on security and so forth at their school meeting, which we will attend, that y'all asked us to attend, and we will attend also on the 18th. Okay, I appreciate that. Yeah, that, that was one of my points that hopefully everybody can attend. Uh, the school board meeting. That's all I have, and I wanted to make sure that y'all knew that we appreciate you coming out that day and, and doing that. And I think the video got released today. I didn't get to see the whole thing, but I think things are going to get a little hot or hotter, and hopefully we get the same type of support. You took your gloves off, Mr. Mayor. It looks that way, and we appreciate you. And, and there's going to be, I would suppose, a lot of accountability and if there's indictments or anything, you know, protocols that need to take place, we hope that you continue to help us go out there and fight the cause. Sure. Well, I mean, I'll say one thing since you brought up the video, and then the press will address your questions after the meeting. But I, I want to go on the record. The way that video was released today is one of the most chicken things I've ever seen. Yes, I've, been, I've wanted the video released, but all these news agencies knew that we were working with the, with the House Committee they were going to have a meeting Sunday to give a report to the family members Sunday morning. And then Sunday afternoon at around 2 o'clock, they were going to come back and answer the family's questions and show them the video. Every news agency knew that, that they were talking to the House. The House went to the Austin American Statesman and KVU TV and told them this was going to happen. And the response was, well, we all have a job to do. There was no reason for those families to have to see. All I've seen is the first little segment of four minutes, but there's no reason for the families to have to see that. I mean, they were going to see the video, but they didn't need to see the gunman coming in and hear the gunshots. They don't need to relive that. They've, yeah. they've been through enough. And that was the most chicken way to put this video out today. Whether it was released by the DPS or who it was released for, in my opinion, was very unprofessional, which this investigation has been, in my opinion, since day one. Yes, sir. And, and I did get a, I had seen the videos that I was at work in Crystal City when, when the video came out. I did get a phone call from Jackie Zant. And she says, whatever you do, do not look at that video. And she was frantic. She was calling her, uh, uh, her mom and Batesel and trying to get in contact of all the family members. Do not open that video. Do not look at that video. But you're absolutely right. There was no. Um... Well, two thirds of the family or part of their families are in Washington, D.C. right yes, now. Sir. And they're going to have to turn on the TV and see that tonight, not even with the rest of their family. This was wrong to do it this way. The yes, video needed to be released that the family should have got to see it first. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. The mayor said chicken. It was chicken shit. Yeah. To release that video the way you did it. That, that part of that video was not supposed to be in what they're doing on Sunday. That was not supposed to be there. They did that for ratings and they did that for money. And that's the only reason they put that out there. We're, we're going to handle that. Adam, I'm not going to get into an argument with you on that deal. I haven't seen the video yet, but I can tell you that one of the officers you called that got, that got grades in that deal, in that video, he goes back down that hall three times trying to get in that room. Three different times. Three different times. I, I know what everybody thinks, and we need to let the investigation come through.
take his shit. He got to get grave by sea rock. I would have attacked him immediately. He also attacked him. Yeah, he attacked him. Cops and did nothing. I, I, you, you're missing the point, Adam, because you don't want to hear but what you want to hear. I have said from day one that every agency that was in that hallway has to be accountable for their actions that day. Everyone. No one will be exempt. That includes local, school, federal, state. Everyone has to explain their actions that day. Everybody has to be accountable. Ms. Castro. Yes, my name is Eloise Castro, and I've moved from San Antonio to Uvalde about four, three years ago. I'm very, very happy to be here in Uvalde. It's a wonderful little city to live in. People are pleasant, kind, generous, and considerate. I've made many, many friends. My question is, I have a few questions. Why has everything been removed from the park? I'm talking about the crosses, flowers, candles, stuffed animals, and the Bible verses have been erased. Whose idea was that? It's as though nothing has happened. It looks blah. I mean, I've had people come from out of state to go to pay respects, and they're saying, where do I go? It's as though nothing happened. Those poor victims and the teachers need to have been, we need to be able to go and pay our respects. We can't go to a park that has nothing. The other day, I was talking to some friends. I've made friends here in Uvalde. You wouldn't believe how many friends I've made. And I um, asked them where that cross was, the big cross that's supposed to be made. And they said, if you go down, uh, like you're going to Del Rio, you'll find the cross. And I did see it at Ace Bell Bond. What a place. How many people, only if you know where you're going, you'll see that cross. It angers me. I am so angry. You cannot believe how angry I am. And I'm not the only one. There's many people here, the citizens of Uvalde, that are angry. Very angry. They feel it's a cover-up, what you guys are doing. Also, they want to know if Peter Aradona is getting paid while he's sitting on his butt. That man makes over $90,000 a month, a year. Oh, furious, furious, furious we are. Um, I, have, I did pass this morning, because I want to know what I was talking about. I passed by Rob this morning, and I did see those little crosses there. They were behind the dead flowers. How dare have Rob have those dead flowers there. Do something, do something. This is ridiculous. Again, you cannot, you cannot believe the anger I have and many of the citizens here in New Valley, and they want to know, is this just another fucking cover up? Yeah. The, so to answer your question at the plaza, there were family members that came to the city that wanted to remove their family's items from the plaza. That's not true. Well, there were some that contacted. They called us and they asked us to go and pick up all the stuff. That's not. That is not true. Okay, they then. They said you need to pick it up to work on the fountain. Don't say what you wanted. Well, then, 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 if that's a fact, then I've been lied to too because I was told, I was told just else. Yeah. yeah, well, what, did, what was our deal there, Vince? We uh, contacted the family members, and we had, we had reached the uh, conclusion that the, the plaza needed to be cleaned up some. The, uh, the flowers, the dead flowers, the weather-beaten items, all that kind of stuff. And we thought that we were working with the family members and getting their permission to do this. And then we offered them the opportunity to join with us. We had actually a cleanup day scheduled on a Sunday morning to, uh, to do that thing. So they, they could take the, the items that they wanted, if they wanted them. If they didn't want them, we were going to keep them in storage for them, which they are right now. When, uh, when word of this leaked out um, and it became apparent that press was going to be there, we called off the, the joint cleanup. The family members expressed to us that they didn't want to be bothered with that sort of thing. They were willing to participate, at least as far as we knew, they were willing to participate with us in, in a joint cleanup. We're going to have staff out there 
as well as the family members. Um, we called it off because we didn't want it to be a circus, and as far as we knew, the family members didn't want it to be a circus either. But all the stuff that was there is in storage. It wasn't a cover-up. It was not any, in any way an attempt to make this go away. It was, you know, it was pretty ragged, and we decided to clean it up. That's what we did. Um, I thought we were in communication with everybody. Uh, if we were not adequately in communication with everyone, that's, that's my fault, I'm sure. I'm sure. It's my people that did it. But um, we had every intention of respecting the wishes of the family members in doing that. And you can, you know, I guess you can question our judgment on that, but um, that's what we did. I have heard otherwise. I have heard otherwise. He, the family members were not asked. You need to put something there at the park to be remembered. These families, the children, to be remembered, the teachers to be remembered. Yeah. Damn it. There are definitely plans, obviously, that we're going to have permanent when, memorials. Two years from now? Well, I don't know when that's going to happen. That's, that's, that's for the community to decide, I'm not for us. That's for the community to decide. I'm here for Mr. Vincent Salazar uh, Sr. His wife is sick, she couldn't be here today. And he told me that he was called from the city and told to get his Leila Salazar's stuff out of there. He wasn't asked, he was told to get that stuff out of there. So between you and your, your people that are working, they got some serious communications that are, that, that are not happening. But he told me, and he has no, right to, no, no reason to lie to me. He was told. Get your stuff out of there. That ain't right. I'm sorry that happened. That was not that was not my intent. That was not but our how intent. How many sorries do these people have to get? Yeah, I understand. How many? That's that's on me. Doesn't can I, what can I say? It's that's on, on me. You. Do something. Do something. Correct it. Correct your mistake. Be a man. All of you guys. Well, be a man. What would you Correct suggest, man? What would you suggest? What do I suggest? What would you suggest? Talk to the families, ask them what they would like. Put those little crosses back there. You don't have to put flowers, because they'll die in this heat. But put the crosses back, you can put stuffed animals there. You can even put, no, the candles forget, because they'll get too hot in the heat. But you can do something that we can remember the, those children and the teachers. Don't let them die in vain, for God's sake. Um, I'm sorry, ma'am. We thought we had an agreement with with the family members, or at least the majority well, of them. Have not. Well, that's, that's what I'm hearing. That's Listen, what I'm hearing. They're talking. I'm hearing it. So you did not have some kind of agreement. They're, they're disagreeing with you. Listen to them. Listen to me. As I said, I'm from San Antonio, but I feel like I'm a citizen of the valley now. And my heart breaks for the children and those two teachers. The other day, I went to Garrett Queen. And the little boy that was shot in the back, he was there with his family. He cannot stand any sudden noises because he gets scared. The family says, the family said the same thing. They were not asked anything. And again, so many people here in the valley, if you go to Walmart, HB, Ophelia, Jalisco, I don't care, people on the street. They're saying the same thing I'm saying. This is a damn cover-up. I have never been so angry. I, this is not Eloise. This is not me at all. Can I, can I add something to what you're saying? I would, we left to San Antonio, my husband and I, at 7 o'clock in the morning because I had a specialist appointment with reference to my kidneys. We just got back at 5.15, just unloaded the stuff that we needed and headed over here. When I was in the specialist appointment, uh, there was an RN that needed to see me, and she said, so you're driving in from Givaldi? I go, yes, ma'am. She said, uh, she looks at me really serious, and she says, so the, the 19 children that died, is that really true? And I looked at her, I go, why are you saying that? She said, because there's a big cover up there. They keep lying back and forth. And I'm thinking that those 19 lives that they're saying that died, I'm saying that maybe it's just not true. And I told her, man, you are so wrong. I went to the funerals. It is true. And this is, I've never seen this art in. This is what people are saying about about the suit and, and you, sir, Mr. Mayor, you keep repeating time and time again. You were.
were lied to. You were lied to. Why are you being lied to? Like she says, come on, man up. Don't let these people do that to you, sir. Ma'am, I haven't said I've been lied to. I said I haven't been told anything about the investigation. Nothing. The only, invest the only briefing I got on this whole investigation was on the 25th from the governor, and the briefing was given by Victor Escalon with the DPS. Since then, nothing. We've asked. Nothing. You won't believe me? Go ask Judge Mitchell, your county judge, who has more authority than me. Nothing. Nothing from anybody. We've asked. Nothing from the governor's office, nothing from the DPS, nothing from the Texas Rangers, nothing from the DA, nothing. Every time they release something, we have to go out and see what we can find on our own and, and refute it or tell them it's not the facts like it is. Believe me, I'm just as frustrated as you are. And whether, you, whether, whether people want to believe that or not, that, that's your prerogative. But, it, you know, do you think I like sitting up here knowing that 19 children and two teachers died? Well, I was your mayor. You think I enjoy that? And I will never feel the pain that these families have felt. Never. I'll ha I have pain, but I'll never be able to comprehend what they've felt. Ever. I can say I understood that there was consensus with the families. And I'd not like to ask Stephen, would you mind telling us what you, what you heard, or, or Jennifer, on the cleanup down there? Can, would you mind telling us? I, I have no idea. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other direct families here? I'd like to hear from them. We have it all on text message. She texted us and Are, she told us. You're a direct family? Okay. I want to apologize to everyone here for the city. And if we can get those crosses back, I don't know where they all are. I don't know if some disappeared. I want to get them all back over there. If we can restore something there, we will do that. Mayor, I, I would ask that the <clears throat> city manager and the staff communicate personally with these families. Ask them what they want. If they want the crosses back, just put them back. If they want that big cross that Ms. Costa was talking about at a certain location, just do that for the families. I agree. I think we need more. Let's work together on this. Yes. I'm, I'm willing to, I'll, I'll help. Whatever you guys need, I'll help you. Whatever you need. I'll help too. I will too. We're all here to help. We're a family. Absolutely. We're all together. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Please. And I do apologize again. I'm sorry. <clears throat> he said, uh, uh, he said I apologize. I didn't know it went down this way, so yeah. I apologize. <laughs> We're, we just, we, we'll, we're going to figure it out. I promise. We'll figure it out. You want to help? <laughs> you want to help lead, me lead that? Can you guys help that? And we can t contact the families and kind of, we, you, you know how to get hold of me. Okay. We'll do that. Let's, let's fix this. Let's get something back in there. Pastor Daniel Meyer. That's, that's the greenery. We've saved all of the greenery from yes. that plaza. All of that has been saved. None has been thrown away. All of that's going to be mulched. Yes. And if there's somewhere, if there's, a, if there's a memorial built that has flowers and things, the plan is to mulch all of that and use that as the mulch in the flower that's, beds. That's what we had heard originally. All of, that, all of that is saved. And if you'd like to come see it, I will take you over there and show you. No. What about these ornaments, uh, the flowers and everything? She says, we're going to store these and, and, and the stands, and we're just going to return the stands to the flower shop to I see don't. if they want them back. I don't know about that. 
I can't answer that. Well, I talked to one of the family members today, and he went and got all the stuff that came from the plaza for his family. He came to my office and saw me today. Pastor Daniel Meyer. Mr. Mayor, Consul, I have a concern. Like my wife mentioned a minute ago, we were driving in from San Antonio at 450, when all of a sudden we hear skid marks, a crash, a truck barreling around the corner. I live at the corner of Claudia and Zaragoza, over there by PD. This guy was fleeing from the police. He just, like, like a, well, like a madman, because he was trying to get away. And behind him were about 20, 30 patrol cars. My question is, what kind of protocol is there for something like that? If it wouldn't have been so hot, I'm sure there would have been kids out there playing. There's got to be some kind of protocol for something like that. Because, I mean, that idiot is running away from the PD. And then you got all these DPS officers that McCraw never talks about, that they, they're so, so good on their job. You got all these DPS officers coming by. What if there would have been kids out there? I agree. We, we have a no pursuit policy for the yeah. police department in city limits. The police department was not in that pursuit. They'll block off intersections. They'll block off intersections. Well, they didn't do it there. <laughs> they didn't do it there. I mean, they, they were beelining like crazy, just running that stop sign like it wasn't even there. They scheduled a high speed chases for us. So yeah, but the first one that the intersection should have stopped and let the other one follow him. Mm -hmm. That's what they should have did. If there would have been kids out there, if it wouldn't have been so hot, there would have been kids out there. We'll talk to the DPS on that. that that's crazy. I mean, something's got to be done. Second, yes. the last time that we were here, the meeting that we had, some Uvalde PD officers were out here, encountered two of them outside the door, and asked them, how, how come you guys didn't do anything at, at the school? Tell me something. Why, why didn't you guys do anything? He told me, out of his mouth, he said, if I say anything, I'll go to jail. I told him, well, go to jail then. But speak up. Say something. Speak up and say something. These people deserve it. Excuse me, I'm a preacher. I get kind of loud. He told me, if I say anything, I go to jail. We'll go to jail. But speak up. I don't know what the cover is, it, Mr. Mayor. I don't know why. I told you the last time that I, we were here, you need to quit being so nice and speak up and step on some toes. I, I've been trying. You need a bigger foot then, brother, because it's, it's not happening. They're running all over you. But something needs to happen. Something needs to happen. Well, I, I mean, mean, I've called congressmen. I've called the governor. I don't know who else you can call. I don't know who else you can ask. I asked the president of the United States when he was here. So who else can you ask? Uh, he's too old anyway. Uh, uh, I'm uh, telling you, I, I mean, I agree. I, 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 this has been the most unprofessional handled investigation that I've ever seen in my life. Ever. What are we going to do, people? How long are we going to be in the, in the blank like this? How long? Somebody's got to get some answers. Somebody's got to get some answers. Well, look, 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 I have worked all the, the last two days to set up for the legislature to come and visit with these families and give them their report. I think that's the most concise, truthful information they'll get out of this whole thing at this point in the investigation. And we were trying to do that in a setting where the families would get this report. They would be able to come back and talk to the legislators that interviewed all these people and ask them questions, and then they were going to show them the video. But that, the, the video part went to hell today because it got released by a station in Austin. And, but this other deal is still going to go place on Sunday, and the families will still get this report from the legislature, and they will get it, and they will be able to ask questions and talk to them. And then the legislature is going to come and release that report to the public that afternoon, two hours after they meet with the family. Something's got to happen, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Garza. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Reverend, thank you for those words. 
Yesterday at our commissioner's court meeting, by the way, I'm commissioner, county, county commissioner, precinct four. Yesterday at our county commissioner's court meeting, I placed an, agenda, an item on the agenda for a resolution, to pass a resolution, and it passed unanimously yesterday. This resolution is very specific. It's asking Governor Abbott to call a special session of the legislature to consider raising the minimum age of purchase from 18 to 21 for semi-automatic assault rifles. I feel most Texans, most Evalians that I've spoken to here are in agreement that something needs to be done to raise that age level from 18 to 21. I visited with gun advocates here in town. Some said 20, most of them said 21 and some even said 25. The idea, I agree, the idea that we have to, people to have to wait till the age of 21 here in Texas to purchase alcohol, to purchase tobacco products, a revolver, a handgun, and yet anyone can purchase an AR-15 the minute they turn 18 years of age. That's crazy. And, and our state legislatures might be hearing us, but they're not listening to us. And I am asking, respectfully asking, that the City Council of Buvalde pass the same resolution. I'm going to email you, Mr. DiPiazza, that resolution that we voted on yesterday. I'm going to email it to you, and I hope that it gets placed in the agenda for your next City Council meeting. We need to tell Governor Abbott that we need help out here in Uvalde. I'll tell you right now. I'll, I, I I'll need to finish, Don. I, I, I need to finish. I have the floor here. State Senator Roland Gutierrez, bless his heart. He is fighting tirelessly. He's been a strong advocate for us. He's the only state elected official that has stepped up to the plate. We haven't heard from our congressman, our state representative. The Lord bless him and bless his family. As elected officials, yes, we are elected officials, but we also are leaders in our community. We need to make every effort to assure and reassure the people of Ovalde, la gente de Ovalde, that we are making every effort to make things safe here for our schools, for our children, for our teachers. This movement, it's a movement, right? Yeah. It's a movement. Yeah. This movement for accountability, for transparency, for honesty, for common sense, legislate, for common sense legislation on gun control is picking up steam. It's not going away. We will not stop. I know I will not stop. I'm not going to be quiet, and I know we're not going to be quiet. Until our voices are heard, because obviously it, it are, they're not listening to us in Austin, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that if we don't get this special session called by Governor Abbott, I understand the legislature is going to is going to start in January, but this has to be our priority, and we all have to, as elected officials, we have to contact. Uh, Governor Abbott and our state le legislators and tell them that this is priority number one here in Uvalde. I want to thank you guys for letting us speak, speak our minds, sp speak what's coming from our hearts. I want to thank you. And we will always be Uvalde strong. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Honey, just so you know, I spoke with Senator Gutierrez the day we met with the president on the tarmac, told him I would go with him 100% to, to make that law happen, to do it. I was there when he asked the governor for the special session in the auditorium that day at the high school. I was there. I've told the governor, I don't see why anybody would have a problem changing the law from 18 to 21. None whatsoever. I own guns. I don't have a problem with it. I got a 22-year-old son. You know what he told me? He said, change it to 21, make them take a test before they get an RI or a class before they can get an AR. And that's coming from a young person. So I'm with you, 100%. Yes. But let's do put that on the agenda. But I'm gonna tell you now, I'm not gonna be here at the 26th meeting. 
uh, on the 26th. But I, I can tell you right now, my vote is a definite hell yes. I agree with you. We need to have that deal. And I've been speaking, and I think there's plenty of reporters that can verify that I've said from day one that it needs to be changed from 18 to 21. Mm -hmm. People need to be held accountable. Ronnie, just that's get that to Vince. So, Ms. Thank Carew. You. Good evening, Council. Thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. Family members in attendance and supporters of the families, those of us that are committed to continuing to speak up, to stand up, to speak up for accountability, transparency, and truth. Because at the end of the day, I like to say that term if you've ever heard me speak it. It's about truth. It's about what is the truth. What happened on May 24th? I do want to acknowledge that Councilman King was also at the march and rally on Sunday. It appears that all of you were there. And sincerely appreciated, I'm sure, by the community. I was there as well. And as I observed a lot of what transpired as people gathered at Robb Elementary and walked and arrived at the plaza and people spoke. One of the most powerful statements that was made that day by a father of one of the children that died, Amari, was that it's not about Republicans or Democrats. It's not about a political party. It's about the people taking responsibility to hold their elected officials whoever they are, whatever party they represent, accountable for how they lead. You know, the city of Uvalde, you gentlemen have been slammed to the wall for many, many days and weeks. And rightly so, to some extent. But I'd like to see the same kind of uh, fire put under the seats of the school board, the superintendent, County commissioners, our law enforcement agencies, district attorney. You know, we talk about don't forget their names, the names of the victims. We cannot forget the names of the people that were responsible for protecting the children and the teachers on May 24th. Not only was it Pira Redondo, our school district chief of police, it was also acting police chief of the city of Uvalde. Mariano Pargas, one of your own. It was also Ruben Olasco, Uvalde County Sheriff. It was also whomever is in charge of the DPS units for the Uvalde County, whoever's in charge for the units for the Border Patrol in Uvalde County. All of those individuals, if not as responsible or more responsible than their officers. They're supposed to be the ones that lead. They're the ones that are supposed to be in the front line leading the troops. And when I looked at that video tonight, somebody sent it to me. I didn't go looking for it. I didn't expect it until Sunday, just like the rest of you. And when I looked at that video and I saw the officers who were standing in that hallway doing nothing except standing back, I was very, very disappointed. And, and I know that I've heard this council say that we cannot release information. If you're gonna step on some toes and just whatever you need to do to bring the truth forward, were your officers debriefed? Have your officers all that were there that day been debriefed, asked what exactly did you do that day? Where were you? What did you do? What didn't you do? And you can gather that information as a city, and whether the district attorney likes it or not, you can share it with the community, if nothing else, with the parents, so that we can be begin to know the truth. You can't speak truth for DPS, but you can speak truth for Uvalde, for the city of Uvalde, the same as Dr. Harrell can speak truth for the Uvalde CISD Police Department. So I, those are excuses. I mean, it's about st standing up and speaking out. It's about, you know what, if I lose my seat, so be it. 
If I get put in jail, like somebody said, so be it. Because people need answers and they need them sooner rather than later. Again, I, I, I just keep thinking, were your officers debriefed? Do you even know the truth? Does Chief Rodriguez know the truth? He wasn't here. He came back. But it's his department, it's his officers. Were they debriefed? Do you have that information? Have and at the end of the day, if the district attorney does call him forward to testify under uh, penalty of law, they shouldn't be changing the story. The story should be whatever they tell him should be what they tell a jury. And so I don't understand why that can't be done. You have the power as a city to ask your employees for answers. Thank you. Thank you. Item 5, Consent Agenda. 5A, consider the minutes of the June 21st, 2022 Special City Council Meeting and the June 30th, 2022 Special City Council Meeting. 5B, consider payment of bills over 5,000 from June the 17th, 2022 through July the 8th, 2022. I review these items. Motion to approve uh, the consent agenda, item 5A and 5B. Second. Motion made by Councilman King, saved by Councilman Balky. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item 6, 6A, consider appointing a mayor pro tem for the city council of the city of Uvalde, Texas. So I would like to uh, appoint Lalo Zamora for mayor pro tem. Second. That's a motion. I'll second that. Yeah. Motion made by me, seconded by Councilman Weveno and Balky. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. 6B, consider accepting. That means if I'm not here, he takes over the meeting. No, I won't be here next meeting. Item 6B, consider accepting a letter of resignation. From Councilman Pedro Pete Arredondo. I make a motion to accept. I second. Second. Motion made by me, seconded by Councilman Zamora and King. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> item 7A, or item 7, special election 7A, consider a resolution establishing a procedure for special election to fill a vacancy in the, Uvalde, in the city of Uvalde, Texas, and order election for November 8, 2022. So do we need to do anything special? Or did it pass the resolution, we'll have, we'll have an okay. election to fill the vacant I'll make place. a motion to pass 7A. Second. Seconded by, motion made by me, seconded by Councilman Balky. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 8, public hearing and zoning matters. 8A, case file 2422PZ, consider request from the City of Uvalde applicant to amend Title 17 zoning of the Uvalde Code of Ordinances regarding definition of owner occupied property and parking and use of recreational vehicles in residential zones. City of Uvalde, Texas, staff comments. Um, this is kind of a three-part um, ordinance change. It was turned down four to three by the Zoning Commission. They had some questions of things they wanted to um, discuss further. And so it probably will come back at a later date as um, separate um, ordinances rather than putting them all in one. There's a section that's definitions. There's a section regarding the use of an RV in an emergency circumstance where you could get a special use permit. And then there is a section about how RVs are to be parked in town. So I'm asking as staff that we table this because uh, PNZ voted it down, but they wanted to look at it again, divided into parts. Motion to table item 8A. 
No second. Motion made by Councilman King, seconded by Councilman Zamora. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 8B, case file 25-22PZ. Consider a request from Michael Anthony Trapp and Jennifer Potter. Applicants are requesting a special use permit to add an accessory dwelling in the back of the property. The address is 809 Sunrise Avenue, NCB 253, Sunrise Subdivision, Block 3, Lot 7, City of Uvalde, Uvalde County, Texas. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, Ms. Potter's father is having some health issues and so they would like to build an accessory dwelling in the back of their property so that he can continue to have his independence but have some additional help from the family. This is one of the things that when we created accessory dwelling units, we were assuming that, that this is how it would be used. Ms. Potter was unable to be here tonight, um, but it is a staff recommendation that this be passed. Um, it did pass unanimously with the PNC, but if you'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Okay. Item 8BB B. will open the public hearing at 647. No one wants to speak, so we'll call it 647 and a half. We will convene the meeting for discussion and decision on application. I'll make a motion to approve 8B. Second. Uh, motion made by Councilman Balky, seconded by Councilman Zamora. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. 8C, case file 23-22PZ. Consider request for Uvalde Allied Development. Jose Hureta, applicant is requesting a subdivision of property and into 10 lots. The address is abstract 216, survey 75, city of Uvalde, Texas, Uvalde County, Texas. Um, Mr. Huerta is developing these 10 lots off of Briar Crown. Um, they're in between Briar Crown <laughs> and Ham Lane. Um, he's worked with city staff. He's requested city water <laughs> and um, these are going to be, each lot is at least an acre, so they're going to be on septic, but they will be using city water. And we are working with him to put that water in place in such a way that we're going to be able to loop our system. So this is going to be an improvement to the water system in that area as well. Um, it, like I said, 10 acres, slightly more than an acre lots. They are all outside the city limits. Work. So then you truck drive, truck stop is? It, they're closer to the now? college okay. end. <laughs> so we'll open a public hearing. Where is this exactly? Um, it's off Ham Lane? It's, it's um, kind of parallel to where the Cottonwood subdivision is, but it's, it's behind those houses that face Ham Lane. There's that little court, and then it's like a couple of houses north of that, but behind those houses. So it opens out onto Briar Crown. Yeah, it should have the the aerial maps in there. And and the water department's bought off on this. We got enough water pressure. It's not going to affect. Yes, anything. we've we've been working with the water department on this. That's a real low water pressure area on that in the town. Um, Mr. Zamora says that it will work. It should be improved because of the loop. Okay, we'll open public comments at six fifty. Buddy, we'll close public comments. It will cost 650 and a half. C reconvene meeting for discussion decision on application. I'll move to approve 8C. Motion made by Councilman Balky. By seconding or nobody? I second the motion. Motion made by Councilman Balky, seconded by Councilman Zamora. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item nine, new business. Consider request from Greg Roberts to remove trees from property located at 225 Mesquite Street. Evening Council, Jared Salem, Summit Landscape and Design, I'm representing Mr. Roberts. Requesting permission to remove one pecan tree from the property. The pecan is uh, considerable rot in the structure and has become hazardous to the house and the patio. 
make a motion to approve 9A. It's Second. the contrary, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Motion by, made by me, stated by Council McKean. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. 9B, consider a request from Ms. Mayella Castanon for the donation to Community Health Development Corporation for a one-acre tract of city property adjacent to the VF Corp site. Hey, Mayella. Good evening, Mayor and the Councilman. My request is to ask for one acre, uh, acre beach adjacent to the BF Corporation and behind CHD, CHDI. If approved by the Council, my proposal will be to build a daycare facility for our staff. You know that recruiting is difficult and CHDI has not been, it's been a challenge for us. This is not in competition with all the other daycares in town, but it's mostly to provide recruitment and retention of our staff. There's, no, there's not another daycare in town that is open late hours like we work at the clinic and Saturdays. So that's uh, right before the meeting I was asked, what would I do or what would CHDI uh, give the city for this? And I would say that it will be providing health care to the community of Uvalde and jobs. So if, with all respect, I request the approval of that one acre of land behind CHDI. You're serving, what, 11,000 people now? Over 11,000 people. Yeah. And as we know, now that I want to of repercussion on, on the health of our, of our community. So we're just trying to get ahead of the game and start getting ready to recruit more providers, more nurses, more staff. Motion to approve item 9B or have city staff begin the process of that. I don't know how we handle that. Is that our problem? What is the process on that, Mr. Gipiasa? If you know. I defer to the city attorney on that if we're gonna actually gift the property. Do we own it? Yeah, I'll we start there. It's, yeah, it's part okay. of the property say. that we own that BF sits on. It's a small one acre tract to, sort of to the west of the BF property. Um, and then we have an additional seven acres to the north of it still, and then the property that BF sits on. Okay, and I'm happy to work with Susan and staff. I, I need to look at the deed and figure out you know, what, what we have, but it's certainly doable. So are we, are we probably donating the to, land? To, yeah. Probably appropriate to nothing else. A motion nothing to, else. to, to proceed with the process. Care. Motion to proceed uh, with the process. We're going to take care of the building, utilities. Yes, everything. we're not doing anything. We're not going to give nothing else but the land. No. Second the motion. Yeah. That's good. I mean, you service all our veterans here too in Uvalde County. You're doing yes, a good job. Yes, we do. So thank you for that. And yes, I'll second the motion. Okay. It's it's almost a little bit landlocked back there, so there's probably not very much yeah. use for it, and it's only it's only an acre, so. Motion made by Councilman King, seconded by Councilman Zamora. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, excuse me, Councilman Loeva, no second that also. Second. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 9D, no, excuse me, 9C, consider approval of naming your street in the Springer Track subdivision. Um. This is a piece of property that you'll probably see in the next month or so as a subdivision. This is the property on Fort Clark where the old wood, or you may know it as Galloway house was. This is the house where Dale Evans was born. Um, it is being subdivided into six lots and they're gonna not face Fort Clark, but they're gonna face the side streets. And in a very unusual circumstance, the street on the west side has never been named. And it's not often that you have something that, when you bring it up, the entire city staff um, all are in agreement, but the city staff has asked that the city council name it Los Angeles in memory of all of those that we lost on May 24th. I'll second it. Yep. Motion made by Councilman Balky, seconded by me. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 9D is to consider de declaring a local state of disaster due to immigration crisis. 
And before we start there, the reason for this is, again, we have had the bailouts in Uvalde. You're going to start school in less than a month or a month. What, you know, by declaring this, we can ask for more assets from the government or the governor or DPS or whatever. But how traumatic is it going to be in a month from now we start back to school and you have your first bell out at a school and it has to go on lockdown? How traumatic is that going to be for the kids and the parents and the community? I can't promise that declaring this declaration will stop that, but maybe it'll give us more assets to fight it. So that's the reason for putting this on the agenda because I don't think it's going to do anything, the traffic's going to do anything but increase more and more with the way it's going. I'm just telling you. And I don't think that, uh, I mean, in the past year, these schools have been on lockdown over 54 times. So maybe we can do something to, to uh, bring more awareness to it and get it to stop the bailouts. Motion to approve item 9D. Second. Motion made by Councilman King, saved by Councilman Zamora. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Item 10 will convene into executive session pursuant to section 551.087 regarding economic development negotiations and convene into executive session pursuant to 51 regarding consultation with attorney on a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the governmental body under the Texas disciplinary rules of professional conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with this chapter. With this chapter. So we'll go into exact. We going back here to executive session. It's 6:58 p.m. 